Salutations respected viewers, it's George from Ireland and I'm in Ireland once more in my native city, Cork and behind me you can see the um, City Hall so that was built in 1932 it's on the site of the former Corn Exchange so quite a lot of corn was produced around here though Ireland were not fantastic for cereal crops because it's just so damp here but um, anyway the railway used to go right past that which is why it's on that site the railway would have been over on this other side or maybe you can see the bridge down there with the curious metal structure above it as in that's what uh, you'd expect for a railway bridge so the the city hall was burnt down by the auxiliaries of the RIC that's the police in December 1920 because they were wreaking vengeance on the city for an attack which had killed one of their men anyway um, the British government later paid compensation for that and apologized in the 1930s a fact which nobody seems to be aware of uh, but I think that this um, hall was actually built before the compensation was paid but there we are because I believe it was, it was Neville Chamberlain did it he became Prime Minister in 1937 part of his 1938 agreement with de Valera handing back the treaty ports of Bearhaven, Loch Swilly and um, uh, what's called um, that island in, in Cork Harbour, Spike Island. Spike Island then became a prison right into the 90s. I remember summer 1988 when they took it over, the prisoners. Anyhow, so uh, here we are on Parnell Place and you can see this um, fabulous bank here. It was the um, Irish Provincial Bank, or Provincial Bank of Ireland rather, as in anybody but Dublin. Well, I, I'm, sometime I better film it a different way and zoom in. You can see all these, um, I got it too bright. Uh, yes, that's a bit better. You can see all the heads up high. And there's an image of Queen Victoria there. So it's got some various coats of arms of various towns all over Ireland. Uh, and then look at here, another very fine building. Isn't that aesthetically pleasing? With these sort of fake columns all the rest of it in Cork Savings Bank. So there was sort of the commercial center of Cork. So Parnell Place was a huge cattle market. And so farmers from all over the county and neighboring counties such as Kerry would come in here. So quite a few um, political rallies were held here on Saturdays because they knew there'd be uh, country folk here who wouldn't be here the rest of the week. And it's called Parnell Place after Charles Stuart Parnell, um, the leader of the Home Rule Party. And indeed he was member of parliament for Cork City for some time. It's had some very distinguished uh, members of parliament. Well, there was um, Fergus O'Connor, if memory serves, way back in the 1840s, the leader of the Chartists, and he was from here as well. So it just shows just how integrated we were in the UK, just how British we were, um, that we're, our identity, yes, we're Irish, but it wasn't inimical to being um, British and involved in mainstream UK politics. Okay, the Home Rule Party came along and started to change that. But uh, yeah, Parnell's from Wicklow, but uh, represented Cork for a while. He represented some other constituencies like Meath for a bit. Um, so there's a double-seated constituency in those days, as in the city elected two MPs in view of its uh, large population. So this is the third largest city in Ireland, not so long ago, a century ago, well, more than a century ago, 150 years ago to be the second biggest city, and then Belfast overtook us. There was a bit of doggerel, I read, in Cecil Hurwitz's book said, uh, Dublin was, Belfast is, and Cork shall be the greatest of the three. But, so that was about the 1930s, recognizing that Belfast was the mightiest and most prosperous city in, in Ireland. Having said that, not everybody that was there well, was wealthy by any means. Uh, some people are poor. So there used to be, the pub over there used to be called the Charles Stuart Parnell, after Ireland's lost leader, the uncrowned King of Ireland, the Home Rule leader brought to grief by his extramarital affair with Catherine O'Shea. Don't call a kitty O'Shea, Professor Fitzroy Foster would have a canary if you said that, saying, oh, they just dubbed it that because that was a slang word for a prostitute. Um, so, anyway, there's nothing particularly notable on the rest of the street. You've seen the very handsome part of it. But as I said, Cork is an island. That's one channel of the River Lee behind. And we're coming on to the next one, not terribly far away. So you can see it's all quite low rise, but there are some taller buildings out on the edge of the city. And indeed, the tallest building in Ireland is in Cork. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, I'll show you some of the less handsome but old-style buildings. How about this? The uh, sort of um, warehouses that used to be very common along here as goods were stored before being shipped off elsewhere because uh, the ships would come right up to the River Lee here. And then sometimes you'll see the wooden wharves for um, loading and unloading these ships. 
um, and then coming on to uh, Parnell Place bus station. So this is the main bus station of Cork and their coach is going all over Ireland here and indeed beyond. You get a coach which goes on to the ferry and sails across to Great Britain. I don't think you can get them to France or anything like that. Uh, so there we are. Um, so the city, um, it tapers away quite, quite abruptly on either side of the river, um, going uphill. I'll turn around and give you an idea what I'm talking about. That's Patrick's Hill behind over the river. And not far away there's Montanotti, as they're named after a place in Rome, Mount Knight. There's Tivoli likewise, again at a place name which is a borrowed from Italy. So we did this partly because of you know, Catholicism. That's the religious denomination of perhaps 90% of the population. Obviously we've had some immigration and the Hindus and Muslims are moving in and such like. And there have obviously been other, uh, always been a few Christians or other denominations such as uh, Protestants. So here it is, the bus station. That's where you need to go. Uh, and then there's the, um, the red setter symbol of the bus station. I'll show you Dunn's stores on the other side. Dunn's stores being, well, the main outfitters of the city, buying just about everything you need. The Dunn family being very prominent and very affluent here for well over a century. And there was Ben Dunn, that businessman who had this uh, murky financial relationship with our teacher, Charles James Hockey, way back in the 70s and 80s. What was he getting exchanged for these payments? Perhaps we shall never know. Okay, so that's the other branch of the lead behind me, incidentally, in between here and there, where it gets hilly. I shall switch it off now.